Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And while the world continues to feel pretty upside down for most of us, myself included, at least we're still seeing some amazing knives being released. Today, we're taking a look at the best new knives to hit the Knife Center shelves in the last month. Let's check them out. So I'm gonna start with some budget-oriented stuff with the Best Tech Eye of Ra, which comes in at 52 bucks right now. But just because something's affordable, it doesn't mean you need to sacrifice style, and this one certainly has that. The defining feature, of course, most readily apparent, are these cutouts that run through the handles. They do add just a little bit of grip, but I feel like that's just coincidental. They're really just intended to look cool, and it definitely succeeds. This hot yellow is only one of the colors you can pick. It has some more subtle ones if you don't like it to be so bright. And the scales come letterboxed just a little bit from the liners, so you get some contrasting gray in this case that you can see peeking out around all the edges, including on the insides of the cutouts, which is pretty nice. But don't let those good looks fool you because the business end of this knife is plenty capable. You've got D2 steel, so you get a lot of edge retention for your 50 bucks. That flat grind with that upswept profile is ready to slice away. And the flipping action is up to snuff too, because we've got ball bearings in the pivot, fling the blade out very quickly. This is just one of the models that Best Tech makes at that $52 price point, and they're all specced very similarly to this. So if you don't like the looks of this one, make sure to check out the rest of their lineup. All right, next up is the Revo Ness, which is a folding Nessmuck style blade that I've really been in love with ever since I got my hands on this early example at SHOT Show this past January. The production versions have finally landed, so you guys are gonna get to see what I've been on about. This is another D2 bladed ball bearing flipper, and it comes in at 60 bucks. Only with this obviously very distinctive Nessmuck blade shape, which you don't see too often in folding knife form. The action is great when you're flipping it, but I've also taken to kind of gripping the spine here between my fingers, pinching the handle opening, letting it fall and click into place on the liner lock. The handle's shaped really nicely too. It's got enough length for a full grip, and it angles the blade just right so that the tip can still be used very easily without all that belly getting in the way too much. All that belly though, combined with the blade shape, makes this a great slicer thanks to that full flat grind. And with how wide it is, it's real easy to choke up and pinch right behind the tip for some super fine control. I especially love the way they've done the pocket clip on this knife. That black stonewash finish looks good, it's rugged, and should hold up nicely over time because it kind of looks pre-worn. It's deep carry, has a nice long arm, and even the screws and the clip itself are both inset into the G10 scale. It makes it very easy to take in and out of your pocket without it getting hung up on anything. The Revo Ness is a must-have for any Nessmuck fan out there such as myself or for anyone who's looking for a great EDC that's just a little bit different than the bulk of the new stuff out there today. All right, next is the Condor Bush Glider Fixed Blade coming in about $42.50. Now this is a spin-off of the Pterosaur, which is one of the best budget fixed blades of last year, but if you wanted something other than a Scandi grind, you were out of luck. As you can clearly see, that's no longer the case. With the Bush Glider, we've got the same comfortable synthetic handle, but now we've got a clip point shape with a flat grind. It's about 4.2 inches long, and we still get that great 1095 carbon steel with a nice rustic finish. I'd say this is probably a better general purpose knife than the Scandi Ground Pterosaur. The Bush Glider is perfect for camping, hiking, hunting, and of course still some bushcraft. The swedge thins things out near the tip for really good piercing abilities, with some broad jimping at the back for your thumb to rest on, and they're pretty wide for a good amount of grip without feeling overly sharp. The handle's nice and comfortable, you got several colors to choose from, I just happened to grab the black one today. My slightly larger hands fit well, but it's narrow enough that smaller hands are not going to have any problems with this design either. We've got a full-length tang that sticks out of the back, great for scraping things such as when you're working tinder or striking a fire steel. In fact, the spine of the knife here is crisp enough to strike a fire steel too. Alright, this next one is the SOG Trident AT, which is one of two, well, maybe three actually, of the new 2020 SOGs that I've been most looking forward to. This knife feels considerably more refined than previous versions of the Trident as they've completely built this from the ground up. It's still an assisted opening knife, but they've built this around their ambidextrous XR lock at the core of the knife. It fires fast and it's easy to operate with either hand. And it's even got an ambidextrous spine safety that works to hold the knife closed when you've got it in that position. Now this wouldn't be a proper Trident unless you had some of those rescue capabilities built in, such as this cutout here on the spine. It reveals a little bit of the edge so that you can cut string or strapping such as seat belts even when the blade is closed. 
It's also got a small glass breaker here at the front of the knife rather than mounted here on the back, which can be a little more comfortable than the way some other folks do it. Now a clip point shape is available and that version has a spine that calls to mind the SOG seal fixed blades a little bit, although it's a little more subtle than previous versions of the Trident, but I like this Tonto option even more. In fact, it's really almost a drop point since the leading edge of that blade still has a good deal of belly. The clip is reversible and deep carry, and it no longer has those giant SOG letterings that turned a few people off in the past. Taken as a whole, you've got tactical and rescue needs baked into the DNA of this knife, but it doesn't really get in the way of it being a good EDC. Now with SOG's Terminus XR, Seal XR, and Kiku XR models kind of forging a new destiny for the company's future, the new Trident AT is the next model leading the charge, and I think it's doing a really good job. All right, next up, the Kershaw Launch 11. Now the launch series of knives are all very good and they're such a bargain that they've always got a strong chance of being one of the best releases in any given month and this 11 is no exception. We've got a smaller design here that should be a really good EDC option, less than three inches of blade length with their signature black wash finish. The handles are black aluminum with a really tough anodizing, should hold up really well over the years. We've got a few cutouts in the handles on this knife too. It's a design element that Kershaw's really been experimenting quite successfully, I'd say, over the last year. We're seeing it kind of crop up in some competitors as well, including that Best Tech, as well as a, uh, a knife coming up just next after this. The Launch 11 has a nice slim pocket clip. It's not deep carry like the smaller Launch 9 is, but it does keep it away from the handle cutout quite nicely. Should help to keep your pocket fabric from kind of bunching up under there too much and hindering your extraction. Now at the core of what makes the Launch 11 great, or in fact any launch model out there, is a combination of good materials, you've got CPM 154 Super Steel and tough aluminum handles, paired with push button action, it's competitive with the best automatics at any price, and it's all American made for just under 100 bucks. Now next up is the new Spyderco Watu coming in at 182 bucks right now. And I got to admit that this knife, as well as its bigger brother, the Chakwe, initially completely flew under my radar because they just weren't my thing aesthetically. But the more time I've spent with them in the hand and the more I've listened to Seth Vietti rave about them, now he's the guy who runs our social media pages, the more I've come to appreciate this knife. The Watu is, in Seth's words, so pokey and slicey and it's true. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way whatsoever. The 20 CV blade starts nice and thin and it's ground even thinner with a full flat grind. That steel is going to give you a lot of edge retention and with the edge itself so thin it's going to last even longer through all your harder cutting. The blade comes to a wicked point and orients really well in the hand for piercing and aggressive cutting. The angle of the handle to the edge itself makes this really like a modified Warncliffe shape, pokey slicey indeed. Those handles are a carbon fiber and G10 laminate, and you can actually feel the weave on the top layer there. It's nice and subtle, adds a little bit of texture without being aggressive at all, and it feels very premium. This knife features Spyderco's patented compression lock, which means you can kind of flick it open real easily if you want, and it also lets you keep your fingers out of the path of the blade when you're closing. We've got Spyderco's wire deep carry clip, which is reversible, makes it carry nice and unobtrusive, and it looks really classy from outside your pants. In addition to being a good tool, the Watu actually supports a good cause as well. The blade itself was inspired by old West African knife patterns, and a portion of each sale of this knife goes to the Keep a Child Alive charity. It supports services and treatment for HIV and AIDS-afflicted children and their families in Africa and across the developing world. All right, it's kind of surprising that we've gotten this far into our list without featuring a titanium frame lock flipper, so it's time to change that. This new Viper Bologna design by Jesper Vaknez is our next entry. Now these knives start at 165, but they're not your typical titanium frame lock flipper. They're actually more inspired by old slip joint patterns. Coming together in this package, it creates a great executive or gentleman's knife. It features a strong frame. This one here happens to be anodized blue with a layer of gray titanium or carbon fiber coming in on the top. We've got a deep carry pocket clip, which is mounted to the back end of the knife, it makes it really unobtrusive, which is even more important in those higher echelons of society got a very classy blade profile going on here. Got M390 steel with continuous belly along the edge. I'm a sucker for a design that has virtually no straight lines. This one definitely has that going on for it. And with a shape like that, that should be a really agile cutter and a very efficient slicer. We've got some nice touches too, like a crown spine for a luxurious feel. I especially love the way they've integrated the flipper on this knife. It's very subtle. You can only see a tiny little bit of a wedge sticking out here, but it still works very well. 
got ball bearings, crisp action, premium materials. It's really hard to go wrong with one of these knives. All right, next is the Riot Iron coming in at 325 bucks. Now you can get it in a flipper version like I have here, or one with no flipper tab and a custom machined thumb stud deployer instead. As you'd expect from a Riot at this price point, it does ride on bearings and it comes together in a compact but powerful design with this broad M390 blade. It's a bit over three inches long and it's good for pinching up too, kind of like that Revo Ness from earlier. And that tip is acute enough for high precision, but it still feels like you can really push this blade very hard. Now the handle design is refreshingly neutral. We've got no aggressive finger grooves here and it should fit a lot of different hand sizes. Even though it's a little bit on the smaller side, it really melts into my palms quite well thanks to the contouring. You can get it in carbon fiber or a few different micarta colors. I have one of the green micartas here with some options for anodized hardware too. So you can kind of tailor your look for more rugged or more refined environments. It's a versatile shape, built to use, and overall it just feels so good to operate. Last but not least is the first whole new Shiragorov design in some time, the Quantum. Now you're gonna pay a premium for this knife. It is $1,100 or thereabouts, but you're gonna be getting an impeccably built folder that few companies out there can ever hope to replicate. We've got absolutely meticulous fit and finish, which is something that unfortunately doesn't really come through in photographs, but you definitely feel it in the hand. We've got a 3.75 inch M390 blade and it flippers open with glassy smoothness. Or you could even open it using these thumb depressions and do it a little bit more slowly if you wish. Now the finishing on this knife is immaculate and their edge itself is consistently thin. Thinner than you'll see from pretty much anyone else out there with this kind of consistency and it's razor sharp. The titanium handles are subtly but effectively milled with an unobtrusive logo here on the handle since the blade itself is unmarked. There's a bunch of other nice little details that you really have to feel to appreciate, including this nice kind of buried lanyard hole at the back. But my favorite detail is the subtle milling we see here on the lock bar release. Adds a little bit of grip, but it doesn't come at the expense of looking great. Now you can certainly spend less on a knife, a lot less in fact, but it's gonna be hard to beat the precision that you're gonna find with the Quantum. So that's it for our list today, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Make sure to let us know your favorites in the comments and to get your hands on any of these cool knives, we're gonna leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, you might as well sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that when you buy one of these, you'll earn some free money to spend on your next knife. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.